Uh, I wanted to review this uh, headset, the Lenovo Mirage Solo, without obsessing on the uh, the competition. Um, so this has been a really hard uh, headset to come up with, the hardest product I ever had to come up with a review for because of its price, function, and uh, the fact that I really like it, but at the same time, there is certain competition that I don't want to talk about, and I want to focus on this, but yeah, so um, this device um, is very good. The hardware, I do believe that the hardware is worth the asking price because it's, you know, it's better. Um, but you have the software side, which is not bad, but it's not great. Uh, there have been a few updates to the software that allows finally a simple feature allows you to search the Play Store. So now you can search the Play Store for applications and such, which you couldn't do before. Also, they've improved the home screen, um, added certain things to that you can see or discover, as they call it. Um, include apps, new apps, um, YouTube videos and things like that. You do have here the YouTube application, the YouTube VR app, um, which is a good application. It's a, I, I use it all the time. This is one of the ones, one of the things I use a lot. Um, you also have obviously the main event here is the, um, two cameras here for, um, for the uh, spatial kind of tracking so that you can move forward, backwards, left, right, up and down. But unfortunately this uh, generic daydream controller that is included does not support that. So unfortunately this does limit you for what you can do and it kind of limits the application, even the, the daydream platform in general because you have the other daydream, the daydream headsets, which do not support um, the uh, the uh, positional tracking, um, you have those headsets, and because of that, you, there's it it holds this back even further. Um, so literally, like moving forward and backward, and all that is normally not really necessary. It's just something you can do that can be cool in some applications, and I actually like it. In, there's some some real cool uses for it, even if they're not necessary in applications like, um, now you have to force the uh, tracking in order to use it in some apps, but it's still kind of cool to use. Uh, like I use it in, um, I think a one useful uh, case for this is the Need for Speed No Limits VR application. And with that, you can actually look out the window and it helps you actually drive the car better. So, you know, being able to look forward and backward, look out the window and all this other stuff um, really helps when you're trying to drive in that application or that game. There's also a sculpting app, uh, which is really cool. You can lean in and look at sculptures and stuff like that. And on the three DOF headsets, you couldn't really do that and it's not as good. I really like using that uh, that feature in, in I think it's called Sculptor. Um, I don't I, I don't I don't sculpt anything because I suck at it, but I like to look at other things, and it's really cool to look at. Then there's also the um, again this is another app that doesn't specifically support um, the six DOF tracking. So in this application, it's uh, what the hell is it called? Oh God, uh, fuck. Anyways, it's called it, it's got. Um, Paintings. You have uh, iconic paintings like uh, the Mona Lisa. You have uh, uh, what do you call it? I forgot. Oh God, <laughs> my my brain is shot. But you know, you can. It's a Van Gogh painting, and I can, for some it's Starry Night or whatever the fuck. Um, but you, I'm not a big painting guy. But it's cool though. Still, even when you're not a painting guy, um, it's cool to be able to walk inside these paintings, and I could walk around inside of a painting that is considered an iconic painting. And on other headsets, you could look around and that was still cool. But in this one, I could actually like look under the bed in, in, in these applications and there's, you could look out the window and there's cool little animations and things. And it's like you're inside the painting and that's really cool. And being able to walk around and stuff, it makes it even better. Um, then we have, what else? Uh, 
So you have like um, media applications. Those aren't very, it's not very important that you can move forward and stuff. But say you had to like, this is something that happens to me and it's, it's a little annoying. It's not the end of the world. But if I had to scratch my head or move forward or something, I know that the whole fucking environment's just going to move forward with me. And when it, when the whole environment moves forward, it could make you feel a little sick and or it could be very annoying and you may like try not to do that be just because you know everything's going to move with you. But on this headset, you look forward to moving forward because you know that you can do that. And it's kind of cool because it's an extra thing that this allows you to do. So, you know, things like that are really cool that you can do. Um, but it's not really necessary. Uh, <laughs> um, the... I would say the home menu where you, you start off into launch applications is cool, but it would be really cool if they could add other things to it. Like maybe you can change out the environments or you can add things to your environment, such as like, you know, beach chairs or some shit or like a radio that you can play music out of or something outside of just that one environment. It'd be cool if it would be like a home, like, um, you know, like an Oculus home or a, um, a, um, you know, Steam Home VR, where you can, you know, change out things and, you know, just do little things to to customize it. Whereas, you know, you could walk around, but it's not, you know, it's not really necessary. <laughs> uh, when you get this, by default, there is a um, kind of a limit on the headset. Like, you move forward and then everything blacks out or whatever. And, you, you know, you, you can only move a limited amount, but you can actually unlock all that and you can make everything work with six off and everything. But some applications that you force six off on don't quite work that well. Um, some of them like, uh, what is it? Uh, Skybox. So Skybox, I, I like to use the feature in Skybox, but if you move too much, you can see little imperfections and things that they did to optimize the application so that it would work well. Like some of the parts of the seats are missing and things like that so that they'd have, uh, you know, better performance and, you know, just little things like that that you will probably see. Or sometimes they just didn't give a shit about a certain part of the application because you couldn't see it. And now because you can move around, you can actually see all these imperfections and things. And some, some applications, they didn't do that. Uh, like Need for Speed, everything's there and everything looks the way it should, basically. And you walk around, you can see everything perfectly. So that's great. But then there's also other games that support it that are really cool. Like, uh, oh God, why can't I remember the name of anything? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there's that application where you... Virtual Virtual Reality. Really cool. Uh, works great, and there's really cool scenes, like when you're in there, there's a part where you're in the uh, city or whatever, a city area, and you can walk around in the city and look at the buildings and everything, and it's really awesome, and it makes it way better, uh, a way better experience for me when you have the 6 off as opposed to the 3 off controls. It's really immersive and awesome, and that's cool. Um... Another thing is if you're looking for local media, this does have an SD card, so you can get like 128 gig or more um, SD card, pop it in there and load it with uh, movies and such, and then you could use it without an internet connection. Also, you truly do not need a phone for this. It's not like the competition where you need a phone just to boot everything up and get everything going. You don't really need that. And it's, you know, so if you don't have a smartphone or something, you can still buy this and you don't need another computer somewhere to set it up. And you now there's uh, they've unlocked the Bluetooth settings properly, so you don't have to fiddle around with it to get to them. And you can pair a, a Bluetooth headset. You can easily pair a gamepad without needing a, a phone app or anything like that. And, you know, you don't need to buy any extra stuff to get the the... This is going to, uh, <laughs> anyways, I'll just come back to it when the camera cuts out. Um, yeah, you don't need any apps for that. So that's another plus, really cool. Um, this, I don't think it sh I should have to say that's cool. I think it should just work that way. Um, so uh, these headset, it, this headset is for the PlayStation VR. Uh, it's the Mantis headset. 
if you have it, it works. Um, so yeah, it does work. I, I use it all the time. The only thing is it doesn't have a mic. So some apps will not let you, like there's one app I came across that wouldn't let you use. Um, you wouldn't let you use the app in general. It's a social app. And I, again, another thing I can't remember the name of, um, but it was a social app and I couldn't use it. It's not Altspace VR. Altspace VR works, except for the fact that it's all glitchy and shitty. So, you know, that's another thing is social apps. Social apps aren't very, there's not a lot of them. It's not a huge social experience, which sucks. So, anyways, but I was talking about the Mantis headphones, and these connect, and they work well. So, if you want to use that, that makes it a lot closer to the Oculus <laughs> experience. But, again, that's another uh, purchase on top of the $400 you already spend on this. Um, so... But then getting back to the social aspect of things, this really is a bit of a um, alone headset. It is not very, you know, you're not going to have a very, outside of the fact that you can cast the screen to the TV so if somebody else is in the room with you, as far as like online social experiences, there's not a hell of a lot. There's Old Space VR, which I mentioned was glitchy so far. They rarely, they update it every now and then, but not, a, not that much. Um, whereas on the competition, it gets updated all the time. And that's another thing is like future support for applications is important. And when you have a, uh, an ecosystem and a headset that really isn't selling all that well, it can, um, affect the exper the experience more in the future. So you may have all the applications you want now, but what happens when something comes out later and people are like, well, the Daydream uh, you know, ecosystem isn't worth putting our app on, and then you end up not really getting the apps that you want in the future. So that is a thing, and I have come across quite a few apps that aren't really there that I would like to see. Um, and then there are ones that are, that are actually, uh, exclusive to other platforms that obviously aren't going to be here. And so, yeah, so, I mean, you do have things like YouTube VR and you have street view, um, and uh, a lot of different Google applications that are available um, YouTube VR apparently is going to come to Gear VR, but not Oculus Go. So, and I think that's more because the Oculus Go doesn't have the Play Store, whereas if you use the Gear VR and you have a phone that has the Play Store on it, it uses Google's, um, it uses their, uh, their services and it's able to do that. I mean, not that you couldn't get around that, but whatever. That's, I believe, the... Excuse, and unless you have, you know, certain, uh, like, money, it has to do with money, you know. If there was more money available, or more money being thrown at people, maybe they would actually put the effort in, but that's the case, whatever. Not about that, it's about this. Um, so as far as social experiences go, me, eh, not a lot going on. Uh, like I said, there's two apps for like social um, media, VR social media type things. One's Altspace VR, the other one I can't even remember the name of. And then there's like a, <clears throat> a couple movie theater, I think, apps that have social experiences. No, one, one. There's no big screen, so that's another one, no big screen. A lot of people like that application. And even though the developer said they're gonna put it on Daydream, I don't know, I haven't heard anything about it recently. Um, you can launch 2D applications from the Play Store. You can easily install them. You can actually launch the Play Store, the full Play Store, and look for applications and install them. You can get Steam Link on here. The screen that it shows is not really that big to me. It's like 4 by 3 and it's kind of small. I would say it's smaller than my TV, which is like 55 inches. So unless you have like a really small TV, I don't see 
too much of a benefit in using it for things like uh, streaming games from your PC or something. It's really not that big. I'd be better off just using my TV. So, but it does help with things like file managers so you can use cloud transfers and all that. So this way you don't have to go transferring over to an SD card. You can also use like Google Photos to sync all your picture, your videos and photos. And that's something that is very useful. But as far as like trying to use it for like PC gaming and it's just not. <laughs> some of the, some of the, the screens get cut off too. Some of the, yeah, some of the UI and things get cut off because it's like a four by three screen basically so it's a cool feature and it helps a lot for things like file transfer but i'm not really going to use it for gaming or anything um unless of course you want to use it for like like i used it for asphalt 9 and that works fine um other thing is the padding on this does not come off that's annoying you can you can wipe it down. They say on on Lenovo's website you can use like an alcohol wipe on it, so you're gonna do that. But if for some reason it deteriorates and falls off, you're gonna have to figure out some kind of replacement to glue onto it or something. Um, there isn't really. I mean, you could use those covers, but I don't want to have to switch the covers out every five seconds. Um, and as far as the head strap goes, I like the head strap. I don't really have a problem with the ski mask style that uh, a lot of people seem to like these better. I don't really care either way. Um, I normally leave the ski mask ones a little loose so I don't have that red face thing. So I just let it a little loose. I don't want to suffocate my skin or whatever. But, you know, this is okay too. But it is a very heavy headset, by the way. It's definitely the hev heaviest headset I've ever owned, and as far as I'm aware, it may be the hev heaviest headset out there because it has all the guts, and it has the rigid head strap, and it has cameras, and it has everything in here. And um, especially once you start adding headphones onto it like that, it does press down on your forehead, so it's a little... It can be, if you pay attention to it, it can be a little heavy on your head, so... I don't know. It's not going to be the easiest thing to take everywhere. I mean, I could fit this easily in a bag. Um, they do make, they also make a, um, a case for this that I saw on Amazon. I don't have it, but there's also, it fits in the PlayStation VR, uh, case as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that. So I'm just trying to do a very in-depth thing here. I want to talk about everything. There's no speakers on this, so you don't have speakers firing audio. You have to use headphones. I um, wanted to mention that um, because that's not very convenient for a lot of people. Uh, we have the headphone jack. We have, oh, one thing I really like about this controller, even though it's not as good as Mr. Oculus Go controller, um, the volume rocker is very nice to have. Um, I use it and I love it. <laughs> so that's great. Let's talk about something else. Porn, motherfucker. Let's talk about fucking porn. Okay. All right. So you can actually install pornographic applications on here. And I find the porn experience is a lot easier to use unless you're going to be laying back onto a pillow or something when you're jacking off. Um, so... Yeah, so you lay in back or whatever. This may get in the way, but you can put a pillow there. But installing porn on here and watching porn is very freaking easy. Porn. So, I think this basically concludes most of my review. I would say that if you find this for a, uh, you know, a lighter price tag, you know, or something used or something, you get it for a good price, it's definitely worth picking up. But you know, I think the competition is offering a better product for the price and it's really a great deal. And it's, unless you have to have six stuff, I don't see much of a reason to buy this, even though I kind of like it more than the competition. <laughs> okay, so I accidentally forgot to talk about something fairly important, which is the screen quality and the lenses. And uh, I would say that it is quite a bit on par with the competition. Uh, there's a bit more of a, um, 
Uh, not a screen. There's actually, I've noticed, if anything, there's less, slightly less screen door effect. But the um, God Rays are a little worse, but they're still very good. Uh, I would say it's better than my Lenovo Explorer by quite a bit. Um, so you still see a little God Rays, but they're not terrible, and they haven't really ruined my experience. And the field of view is about comparable, but if anything, I would say the image quality is actually, for me, is sharper than, yes, the competition. Um, so it's not as blurry. Um, and uh, I don't know what that is to do with because it's not like the center of the vision is sharp and the peripheral vision is blurry. It's just, as a whole, the whole thing is sharper. So it may just have either the lenses are a specific way so that however they made the lenses, everything looks sharper. Uh, the other thing about the lenses, it's not as forgiving as the competition. and But it's still fairly good. And like I said, when I get in the sweet spot, everything looks sharper. And it's just that you get those slightly more God rays. And, uh, but for the most part, it's, it looks really good. As soon as you get in the sweet spot, you're there and everything's great. Um, and, uh, as far as I, I like the uh, sharpness of the display a lot. Um, black levels are the same They're It's an LCD panel, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, uh, it's not going to be on par with a, uh, with a, uh, whatchamacallit display OLED. So... You're not going to have the same, but it still looks really good. Um, and I have not really had any issues with the uh, with the display quality. Um, when you're comparing things like uh, the 75 hertz versus uh, 70, what is it, 72 or something, that is really, I don't notice any real difference much. The And another thing I didn't ta uh, tackle was... And I meant to, but it was performance, and the performance is actually a little bit better. Um, certain apps really show off how much better the uh, 835 uh, compares to the 821 processor. Um, and yes, for the most part, I think the performance is better. The optics are kind of in the middle. It's like it's if you want a sharper display, which I think I prefer... Uh, that's, that's good. That's what this has going for it. And, uh, the God rays are just a little more. And, uh, as far as that goes, the tracking, I want to point out the tracking is fucking perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the tracking is completely perfect. I never had any issues except for with the only issues is reflections. So if there's a, if it's, if the cameras are looking at a reflection, it may act up a little, but a lot of times that hasn't even happened. But as far as keeping your position properly, it's perfect. Um, there's no drifting or anything like that. And I don't even have problems with drifting as far as the controller goes. So I don't know what they did. But it seems like firmware has fixed a lot of the drifting issues for me. So that's that. So now, now I can say thank you for watching. And this is a long goddamn video. Have a good one.